For those of you that know me personally, you're probably aware that I'm slowly but surely trying to change my entire workflow to be entirely within a terminal so that I never have to leave the command line interface. It's a really dumb idea, to be honest. The reason that I'm doing it is to sort of be POSX compliant myself, I guess, to be able to SSH onto any machine, even if it doesn't have a graphical user interface for me to use and still be as efficient as I possibly can be. It's not an easy task at all. And in fact, things like video editing and Android uh, layout previews, I'll never replace that in the terminal. I'll always need a graphical user interface to do those things. However, there are some applications that you might not have expected that can be replaced by the terminal. Surfing the web, for example. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the fantastic tool that can turn your terminal into a web browser. It's called W3M. Let's have a look. Hey folks, my name is Ben and welcome back to the channel. Very quickly, a small selfish ask that if you enjoy this video, please give it a like. And of course, if you enjoy this entire channel and the content that I put out, please consider subscribing to the channel. Right, onto the content. I'm gonna show you W3M and of course, how to use it. W3M is a terminal web browser. That means that you can browse the web inside the comfort of your terminal. W3M doesn't look anything like the normal browsers that you're used to, like Chrome or Firefox. It's entirely text-based. Why on earth would you want to browse the web with no images, no videos, useless CSS that doesn't do anything because it's all text-based, and of course it doesn't run any sort of JavaScript engine? Well, probably normally you wouldn't. However, if you were SSH'd onto a machine that didn't have any sort of graphical user interface and was a headless machine, and you needed to find out some information quick, perhaps a quick line of code to fix something, or very quickly look up the news, then W3M might be your solution. Regardless of your reasons, I'm gonna show you how to use it. As per usual, you can install W3M using your package manager. So in my case, brew install W3M or pacman SW3M or apt get install W3M. You get the picture. To start W3M, you simply type W3M space and then give it a website to navigate to. I'm gonna to go to duckduckgo.com which is like an alternative to Google. I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna load. And now I'm in a web browser. I'm looking at the DuckDuckGo website in its most stripped down basic form. If I just show you what DuckDuckGo normally looks like, this is the usual website. So you can see it looks completely different. I've turned on Keycaster so you can see the keys that I'm typing in the little blue box in the bottom left of the screen. Let's say I wanna browse the news. So I'm gonna use this search engine to find some news. I'm gonna use tab to move to the next hyperlink or the next clickable item. I'm gonna hit enter to actually go into the text box. I can use text fields as well. At the bottom, you can see that it's turned to this text bit and I'm gonna type the text that I want to submit to the text box. So I'm just gonna type in news. I'm gonna hit enter and you can see the uh, search bar now has been populated with the word news, but I gotta hit search. So I'm gonna tab to the next clickable item and it's, it's selected this search, which is sort of colored red at the moment which is like a button. I can hit enter to click that button. And now I have search results. I have Fox News, CNN, and then there's the page continues on off screen. If I hit space, I can go down a page and you can see I can go down the page to number 10 and there's the BBC. And I can hit lowercase b to go back. So b for back, go back up. So space to sort of page down and b to go back up. I'm going to go to, um, the BBC website here. And you can use the arrow keys to move your cursor as per normal, or you can use the Vim J and K keys, which of course I'm, I'm very used to, so I use those to move up and down. When you're sort of at the level, you can use your arrow keys to go left or right, or you can sort of tab to go to the next clickable option anyway, as your cursor gets closer. So always sort of tab. You can back tab, so go sort of backwards with the tab and with shift tab. So I can shift tab to go backwards to the next clickable link and tab to go forwards. If I hit enter on this link whilst it's highlighted, I'm gonna to go to that website. So I'm gonna to go to the BBC News now. As you can see, it looks completely different to how the actual site looks. It is not stylized in any way. It's just all the links and all the text dumped onto the screen. I'm gonna use my space key to sort of uh, page down and we can start finding some of these links here. Here's one. Um, Johnson, very confident MPs will back deal. I'm gonna, that's a link, it's colored blue. You can tell it's a, it's a link because it's colored blue. I'm gonna hover over it and I'm gonna hit enter to click into that link. 
I'm gonna again page down and find some content. And here's all the words. Again, there's no images, there's no video, there's no anything else other than sort of the links and the words and the buttons and the search bars. But now I'm essentially, for all intents and purposes, browsing the web. I can page down, I can read all of these, uh, all of this wonderful information, I can click links to continue on my journey. So now let's look at some of the normal features that a browser gives you, that W3M also gives you, it's just a little bit more complicated to find those things. For example, the address bar. It's nowhere on the screen right now. I can't use the address bar to change my URL or navigate elsewhere. However, it is here, you just have to type capital U, so shift U, and at the bottom you can see it says go to URL, and it's got my current URL in the buffer ready to go. I can then um, control U to wipe that away and type in my own URL, so www. Uh, let's go back to duckduckgo.com and hit enter, and it will then navigate me to the address that I've entered. If at any point I wanna go back, like in a browser, the back arrow button, I can do capital B to go back, Another useful feature is if I hit lowercase s, it shows me a list of my previous destinations, my previous buffers if you like, and I can navigate between the lines and if I want to go back to the DuckDuckGo page that I was on, I can navigate to it and hit enter and it'll take me back to it. It's a much easier way of navigating around your pages. If at any point I want to view the actual page's source code, so the HTML that is behind the page that I'm seeing, I can just hit lowercase v and it will show me the pages uh, HTML in all its glory and I can page down or page back up and have a look at it. To get out of that view, again, I'm just gonna use the back button, so capital B. If I want to search for something within the page, I can use control S for search, control S for search, and type in the word that I want to look for. I'm gonna look for the word Boris, and it will. Sh if I hit enter, it will take me to the first iteration of Boris, and I can use lowercase n to jump to the next one, so n for next, 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 and I can use capital N to go backwards, so backwards to the previous searches of Boris. If I want to reload or refresh the page, it's capital R, and as you can see, not a lot is happening because it's just showing me the same page that I was already on. If I want to view my browser history, it's control H for history, and then I can tab between the links that I've been to, and of course, enter to go back to that link. If I type lowercase o, it'll take me to my options setting panel, and in here, there are a bunch of um, settings that you can tailor or tweak to your liking to change how W3M works. So for example, uh, I'm going to, there's, there's colors here that you can see. I'm gonna change the color of um, uh, links from blue. If I just navigate onto it, hit enter, and it gives me even like a little pop-up list. I'm gonna change links to be white, um, and then go down to the okay and hit enter. And now, when the page reloads, you'll see all the blue links that were there are now white. I'm not gonna go through all of these options, have a little look through them, read what they do, and feel free to change what you wanna change. Because W3M is so vast, and there's so many different key bindings, and so many different things you can do with it, the help page of W3M that's inbuilt into it is incredibly useful. To access it, it's capital H to get to it. And of course, you can page through that as per usual, and it'll tell you what key bindings are currently attached to which actions, and it'll try and explain that action a little bit better. So you can see um, right at the top here, scroll down to the next page, that's that sort of page down option. There's um, Control V, Control O, the space key, there's a bunch of different key bindings for one action. I'm not gonna explain all of these key bindings or all of these actions. I'm gonna leave the help page to you to have a little explore for yourself. However, it's incredibly useful just to remind yourself of which key binding does what. And of course, you can search within this page, as with any page in W3M, by using Control S and typing in what you're looking for. To quit W3M at any time, simply hit Q, and it'll ask you if you're sure you want to exit. Hit Y to confirm, no to deny. So we've looked at the most basic W3M commands so that you can pick it up and run with it right away. Don't forget to access the help page with capital H to find out all the key bindings and actions that you can do. And of course, access the options panel with lowercase o to change your options as you want them. So now let's run through a little scenario. Let's imagine that I'm a programmer trying to write a bash script and I've forgotten what the correct shebang is to use for a bash script. And let's find the answer by staying completely in the terminal and using our new W3M skills to try and find the answer. 
In this example, I'm inside of Tmux. I've got one window here, which is where I'm writing my code. And I've got one window over here, which is my W3M window. First of all, I'm gonna use the DuckDuckGo search engine to try and search for the thing that I'm after. So bash, shebang. I'm gonna hit enter, tab over to the search button and hit enter on that. I've got a bunch of pages. I'm just gonna to go to the first page, which is a Stack Overflow page. I'm gonna hit enter so that I'm now in this page. I'm gonna page down a little bit, hitting the space bar till I see some sort of answers. So here I can already see that there's some shebangs here, but this seems to be the Stack Overflow question. So I'm gonna look a little bit lower. Um, and here we go. Um, you should use, where's that gone? You should use um, bang, USR, bin, env, bash for portability. So I'm gonna take that. However, I could now go back over to my other Tmux window and type that in, or I could copy that line and paste it in like I would with any normal browser. I'd highlight it, copy and paste where I want it. You can still do that in W3M, it just takes a little bit of effort. To do that, we're gonna use our final key binding, which is escape and E. Escape and E opens up your editor that you've specified inside your option setting panel. Remember the O key binding. So here's the page inside of Vim and you can see my cursor's already on the line that I'm interested in. Now I'm just gonna use my normal Vim actions to yank that line into a register and paste it back over in my other Vim buffer. I'm gonna use capital V to select the entire line and I'm gonna use speech marks A yank yank, so YY, to yank that entire line into the A register. I'm then going to switch back to my other Tmux window. I'm gonna make a new line and I'm gonna paste from that A register. To do that, I'm gonna use speech marks A and P this time and there is the line now in my correct Vim buffer that I'm interested in. And of course, at that point, I can just um, delete everything around it um, and use it as my shebang, answering my question, solving my problem, all while staying inside the terminal using the W3M terminal web browser. And that's really it. I just wanted to give a very quick overview of W3M, show you that this crazy thing exists in the first place and a quick tutorial on how to use it. And in fact, how to use it sort of properly in a real world example. If you want to learn more about W3M, it has a great online manual, link in the description down below that just takes you through everything to do with W3M. All of its key bindings, all of its options, everything. One more note, if you really don't like the default key bindings that W3M gives you, that's totally fine, you can remap them. To do that, simply edit a file in your home directory inside the .w3m folder called keymap. I've done one for an example there. Just type in the command keymap, the um, key combination that you wish to use, in this case it's control and O, and then the action that you want to trigger from that mapping. I'm not gonna go deeper into the key remapping here. That's something you're gonna to have to explore on your own. So I know that's a bit of a strange tutorial and a strange video and you might never ever use W3M in your normal workflow. But perhaps one day you'll SSH onto a headless server and you'll think, how can I browse the web from here? And you'll think W3M. Or you're just a complete lunatic like myself and want to move your entire workflow into a terminal. As usual, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions at all about anything I covered in today's video, then please reach out to me at my Twitter handle, Ben underscore Cadell. Otherwise, feel free to ask your questions in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of what I do. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, it's tight today. It's a tight shirt today. It's a tight shirt. Keycaster, you find there. You're great there. Thank you. Ah, using your package manager. Using your package manager. Again, yeah, yeah, package manager. H, it's simply H. It's not H, it's uppercase H. That's it, done. Get out, quick, quick, quick. Stop recording. Hopefully this was still recording.